All right, hey everybody, and welcome for another Bark Box. So, yet again, super excited. Winer and Epic are already going down on the box before I even get the camera up and going. We got Winer on the right side here hitting the box. Epic kind of waiting and staring, watching his dad do the work. And then we've got L coming in from the left hand side here. So as usual, we're not finding the easy way into the box. We're hitting the box, making a new hole, and apparently trying to pull things out through the tiny hole. It's not gonna work. So we got that powerful bill strike going on. They're all three really, really curious about what's in the box. Making a little progress. You can see he's tearing away little pieces. Again, a couple different angles on the strike there. Some good head twisting action. Epic gets really into this sort of thing. I mean, Winer gets pretty into it too, but Epic always does a good like strike and then shake to pieces method. You can see he's slowly chipping away at the box. Might actually go for opening the lid. I totally broke the lid. But we're getting inside the box now. We'll see if we can get all the stuff out. So the first thing to come up is our smashed potato. Kind of hard to see with winer blocking. There's a better door than a window right now. Um, but the smashed potato is a fun one. It's one of those kind of double toys where it's got a fun bouncy rubber ball inside that is wrapped in a plushy exterior so if they rip off the plushy exterior then they still have a rubber ball left and then apparently kicked out a little bit earlier we got the smush room um that one is another it's got like sort of a wacky bounce to it natural rubber and it's got a smoke scent you know, hornbills probably won't be super interested in the scents, but um, Wacky Bounce is one of their favorite things, so they're going to like that smush room. It also has a little, um, it looks like a mushroom cap, and it's got a space where you can pack treats or peanut butter or something into it. Um, the Hornbills aren't into peanut butter, but we could pack that full of other food items for them. We got that smashed potato out there on the ground, already super dirty, <laughs> rolling it in the leaves. So this month's box, we're rolling out a little bit late, um, but it is Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving themed. So everything in there is basically a Thanksgiving feast. We got our mushroom, our smashed potato. Um, there's also a brawny broccoli and a plucky wishbone in there. So everything's kind of Thanksgiving dinner themed. So you see, Epic loves the things with the wacky bounce and roll. Um, it really encourages his his prey drive. So the fact that it basically rolls away from him, super funny, um, just spurs him on. It's like he's chasing down a prey item. He's really invested in it. From time to time, we will play... Um, like soccer with these guys. We got a couple soccer balls that we'll bring out and kick them around the yard for Epic to chase. He likes to, you, if you get him started, he'll keep them going and keep chasing after them. And apparently traveling with this smashed potato is more interesting currently than finding the other two items in the box. We're going to take that for a walk. So... Epic's really good about engaging in like self-play 
where he'll keep himself occupied. It's really nice for when he's spending quality time with his dad because his dad is a little bit older and tires out a little bit faster than Epic does. You can see he's got a ton of energy and Weiner, not so much. Weiner is a little more laid back. He likes the socialization aspect of it, but he doesn't really have the energy to keep up with all of Epic's antics. And then L is just a little more reserved and not quite as interested in the high energy playing like Epic is. So you can see him trying to get a good strike on that. And as he gets closer to L, you can see she's doing some playful behaviors too. Um, Epic, I, I feel like I've said this before, but he's really clever. He, you can see him taking that over to that stump where he can back it up against the stump and get a better strike on it. Real smart. He took this um, smashed potato over to the sunniest area of the yard. These guys love sunbathing and spending their time in the, in the sunshine in the afternoons, especially during the winter. You can see Weiner and Elle are relaxing a little bit in the background. Epic's getting real fired up about this smashed potato. So thank you, BarkBox, for sending this one. He is in love with it already. All right, we called him back here to the box to check out our last two items. Let's see, Elle is investigating. Weiner is up in my business. Epic is up in my business. So we got that brawny broccoli, which has um, a hard nylon stem and then a natural rubber crown. Um, gives it a good wacky bounce. And then we've also got the plucky wishbone there, which is a solid nylon thing that's really good for like um, chewing. But these guys would probably toss it around. Again, they all sprinted back. So look at that smashed potato again. So we're going to move on to our next set of birds. One second. All right. So now we're back in our South American Pavilion building in our Toco Toucan and Northern Helmeted Curacao exhibit. We got Morgan, our female Curacao here, checking out parts of our Thanksgiving themed super chewer box. I didn't have the heart to, to take back that smashed potato from Epic. So we've just got the brownie broccoli, the smush room, and the wishbone, the plucky wishbone. Now this time around, I've filled that little, the smush room with pieces of grape, because our curacao and toucans both love grapes. Let's see, she's fishing them out of there. Now our toco toucans and our northern helmeted curacao are native to South America, and they're um, sort of warmer weather species. Curacao are really interesting birds. They are what we call galliforms, so they're related to turkeys and chickens. And they've got a really interesting feature on the top of their head, which we call their helmet. So that's that little gray ornamentation there on the top of their head, which um, as far as I know, it's not 100% clear what that's for. But one of the thoughts behind it is that it might help their vocalization, which is a really loud booming sound might help it resonate and carry better throughout the dense forests that they're known for living in. So we can see her checking out the different items here, kind of testing them. She's very, very curious. Um, Curacao aren't what I would consider a super chewer, but they will definitely engage with different textures and things. You can see her trying to sweep that sideways to try and get food to fall out of it. She's not quite as um, successful as one of our southern ground hornbills would be. <laughs> She's a little more delicate about picking things up than Epic or Weiner or L would be. She's trying to flip that one over and see if it's got anything inside of it. It is a solid object that doesn't have any treat hiding places or anything like that. It's really good just for chewing. Um, I figured she'd be interested in it because it's a novel shape, something that she hasn't encountered before. And you can see she's kind of spinning it around and having a good time with it. Um, it also has a bacon scent. And they're not super keen smellers, so she's probably not interacting with it for the sake of the bacon scent, but it's still novel and engaging for her. 
And she's checking out that broccoli. This one has a mint scent to it and it's got some softer parts on it. So it might be a little easier for her to manipulate. But again, it doesn't have any treat concealing places. So um, she's not gonna find any treats falling out of that one by knocking it over. We got one of our toucans coming in in the background. Our toucans are super curious. So they're kind of watching her interact with it and they're gonna wanna take a turn pretty soon. So this um, bill swiping technique that she's using is something that they might use in the wild to uncover bugs or fallen fruits or veggies or something like that um, from underneath leaves or different um, substrates on the ground. So they would sweep that to the side and expose whatever it is that they're going to find to eat. It's definitely not working for this broccoli, but it's still an interesting natural behavior. I have two cans coming in closer. For a closer look, I'm testing out that broccoli with his beak there. Um, Toko toucans are famous, actually, for that really, really big beak. Um, and it's got a lot of cool facts about it. So um, that really large beak, it seems like it might be clumsy or really heavy, but it's actually very, very light. Um, and it's got blood vessels running all the way from the basically the base to the tip underneath the surface of that um, keratin layer on the outside. And those blood vessels help keep this bird cool. So um, the bill will help keep the bird cooler in its hot tropical climate that it lives in in the wild by sort of diffusing heat out of the beak. They're also <laughs> able to be really delicate with that beak. It seems like it might be really awkward, but they can pick up the tiniest of things and be really, really delicate with them and share food back and forth. Because this is a Thanksgiving themed Super Chewer Bark Box, I did just want to take a second and say thank you to Super Chewer Bark Box for sending us these boxes. They've been a huge joy to us all year round. A lot of fun for us and a lot of fun for our birds and hopefully a lot of fun for all you guys watching at home. So thanks for checking out this month's Bark Box video and we'll see you next month.